Hi, I'm Peter J. Ray. Welcome to Adventures in History. Today's topic is Lenore Zook Hughes, 1966 Pacific Ocean Islands Vacation Diary, Part 1. This was originally published as ZF Zook Family Memories Collection, or ZFMC Number 16. And Lenore, Lenore Zook Hughes was my father's mother's uh, sister, one of, one of her sisters, and she traveled... Uh, she took this trip with her husband, Dale Hughes, uh, and, a, and a group of people. And uh, Lenore and Dale Hughes were, were really wonderful people. Okay. February 10th, 1966, Papiti, Tahiti. We arrived here via Air France at 7.15 a.m. after a good eight-and-a-half-hour flight from Los Angeles. This is the water world. We did not pass over any land whatsoever until we landed here, 5,000 miles from the mainland. We went five miles into the little town, walked along the wharf where a freighter was unloading. There were the brightest colored fish, blue, red, yellow, etc., in the fish market on the square. Our tour leader is Lynn Crawford, a friend of Tom's, a very nice person, and it looks as though he will be a good director. It is very, very hot here, sun shining bright. The mountains are lovely, and there are so many bright flowers in our hotel garden. We are staying at Hotel Ta'aon, right on the Pacific Ocean. There are 15 on our tour, six of them men. This island is surrounded by coral reefs, and the sand on the beach is black volcanic sand. The landing strip is made of coral rock built right in the water. Dale and I lay down for a nap about 5 o'clock to be all ready for our first dinner party at 8.30. Dale waked me at a quarter of 10. We missed the dinner but got down to the dining room in time for dessert and the last number of of a fabulous floor show of Tahitian dancing girls. We stayed for the second show after our group left. I think the sleep did us more good than the dinner. Everyone had quite a laugh over it. February 11th, 1966, Maria, Tahiti. We got up early to get the boat for Maria. It's about 12 miles from Papiti, a two-hour rough ride. As soon as we cleared the coral reefs beyond the lagoon, the current was something, and the boat accommodating around 50 passengers and freight, very sturdy, bounced around like a cork. Maria is a beautiful little island, the setting for the story of South Pacific and we recognized Bali High Mountain even from Papiti. The hotel where we spent the day swimming and eating the native food was right next to the wharf, a perfectly delightful spot run by two, fellow, two, Amer- two American fellows, and the two native dancing shows were terrific, one in the afternoon and one in the evening. We had a rough return trip getting back to our hotel in Papiti at 10.30. This is one of the most beautiful places in the world. These two islands are French, and the natives speak a language of their own and do not understand us. Their dancing is more than we expected. Little girls on up are expert with the fast heat dances. No music, only drums doing the accompaniments, and they are fine-looking people. February 12th, Papiti, Tahiti. Today was super. We had a trip around the island, and what a paradise. We visited a tomb of one of the early rulers who ate himself to death. On top of the tomb was a big bottle of Benedictine. This island is one lovely garden with a drive along the ocean all the way around. Rocky cliffs and in one spot we stopped at a blowhole and a cave with ferns everywhere. We had lunch at a Chinese restaurant on the isthmus going over to the small island. Baked crab meat, egg foo young, elegant. We went swimming on the nicest beach I have ever seen. We visited a museum of Paul Gauguin's works, replicas, dedicated to him. It's a beautiful spot with the architecture having a Japanese flavor. On our bus we had three native musicians who sang and played all day long. A little native girl danced and posed for pictures when we stopped to swim. We saw the point of Venus as we stopped at the old lighthouse where there was a monument to Captain Cook, who discovered Tahiti in 1769 by accident in his search for Australia. 
by this little park is Matavai Bay, where Mutiny on the Bounty was filmed. Tahiti is the spot where the mut- mutiny of the sailors of the Bounty took place. The ship Duff brought the first missionaries to, to, to Tahiti, and after a long struggle, Christianity became the island's religion, and there are now many small churches. Tiaria is Tahiti's native flower. Flowers abound everywhere, brilliant, huge varieties of tropical flowers. France is building a new series of buildings to house the French soldiers, 20,000 that will soon arrive, to man their atomic experiments that will take place here. The Tahitians take it easy in the morning, siesta in the afternoon, and rest at night. February 13th. We had an early morning flight, 725, four and a half hours to Nandi, Fiji, which is another beautiful South Sea island with rich soil and verdant growth. Nandi is a small town, and our hotel is really a motel right near the airport. The two girls at the desk admired my stone bracelets, and I promised to send each of, each of them one. There are many people from India living on this island, many children too. The weather is beautiful and warm. We bought sun hats. Mine is made from tapa cloth over straw. The tapa cloth is made from a tree, beating and, beating and stretching it, and then painting the native art in warm brown shades, no two alike. We want to find some pieces at Suba if we can send home. February 15th, Lautoka, Fiji. We came by car to Lautoka, leaving Nandi at 10 o'clock a.m. Everywhere there are sugarcane fields, for sugar production is the chief industry of the Fiji Islands. The weather is very warm, skies are beautiful, and the islands that rise right out of the sea are something to behold. This afternoon we took a glass bottom boat over the coral reefs to see the tropical fish of brilliant colors and the strange coral formations. We stopped at a small island for a picnic of pineapple juice, bananas, cake, and cookies. Cookies. Our food is wonderful. Likely we won't be able to get into our clothes after this trip. The people of Fiji are different looking than in Tahiti. Here they are fuzzy-haired, big, well-built specimens, good-looking and very friendly. We picked up another couple here that came two weeks ahead of us. February 16th, Suva, Fiji Islands. We arrived at Suva, 130 miles from Lautoka. We came by car and most of the road was unpaved, but most interesting. We followed the shoreline two-thirds of the way, then through the jungle and rainforest. It was a beautiful trip. The mountains are so lush and green. We stopped for lunch at the Koroleva Hotel right on the Pacific Ocean, a lovely spot. It amazes us to see these beautiful hotels. The Grand Pacific here in Suva is right on the Pacific, and we are sitting at the breakfast table, not 30 feet from the ocean. The clouds are hanging low over the mountains. The weather so far has been perfect. Our little radio works fine. We get news from England, weather reports just like home. Our roommate at Lautoka brought, a, brought me a corsage and a nice piece of tapa cloth as gifts. Dale gave her a new dollar bill, and I'll send her a bracelet when we get home. February 17th, Suva, Fiji Islands. Today we are going sightseeing here in Suva. The market is very colorful, and we may find some good shopping. We went to the Fijian Museum, many artifacts of headhunting days, pieces of the ship Bounty and shrunken heads. We took a tour of the town, had a beautiful view of the bay from the highest point, the water reservoir. The greatest activity was over in the market. We did get in contact with a manufacturer of native goods, went out to his shop after lunch with him, and Dale bought bought one of the huge clam shells, a Japanese fishing ball and two smaller clam shells. These will be shipped to the States by the first U.S. ship to come into port. He paid $27.05, and this included sea shipping charges. February 18th, Becca Mbega Island, Fiji. We started early from Suva to go by car, 30 miles to get a sailboat for the island of Becca to see the firewalking ceremony. The sea is calm, and our ride on the sailboat is like what you dream about. 
the sky full of white fluffy clouds, and the ocean indigo, with the reefs and deep coral beds a sapphire color beyond description. The boat ride was two hours out, and we had two lines out to, t- to tempt the fish, but no luck. We, ri- we arrived at Bequa before lunch, and the, tribes- and the tribesmen carried us ashore as the boat couldn't come into shore far enough to allow us to wade. Even at that, we came from the sailboat by lighter. We have, a, we have a description of the fire walking ceremony, a ritual that soon will be a thing of the past. The singing of the tribesmen during the fire walking ceremony was beautiful, real harmony. These Fijians are so soft spoken and cordial. This day we shall never forget the finest of the trip so far. February 19th. The trip today is by canoe powered with outboard motor up the Navua River to a native village to see the kava ceremony. The river wound through high mountains with cascades like bridal veils after coming from the high hills. We canoed through a number of swift rapids 12 miles, our trip taking two hours. We finally arrived at the native village where we were met by the natives en masse. The children gave us flowers for our hair and took us to the chief's hut. They are very formal during the kava rites of welcome. We had a lunch in the chief's hut, then went to the school. The children recited, sang, and danced for us. We all drank kava, thought we might get sick from it, but no bad results. Another wonderful day. February 20th, Mokambo Hotel, Nandi, Fiji. We checked out of Kokoleva Hotel by 10 this morning, drove to Nandi by noon, and came to the Mokambo Hotel. It is situated on top of a hill with a far view of the ocean. We looked toward the mountains from our bedroom window. Fiji is a most attractive place. We like it much better than Tahiti. The food has been very good, and Lynn Crawford is a fine tour director. Tomorrow morning we leave for New Zealand at 9.30 a.m. Our group is now 17 in number, a very cooperative group with seven men and ten gals. The lantana grows wild here everywhere in the jungle country. February 21, Auckland, New Zealand. Flying time from Nandi, three hours. Our flight was very smooth with a cloud deck below us. We checked into Royal International Hotel after lunch, a very nice hotel. Our room is fine and the food here is wonderful. The afternoon was free, so Dale and I went downtown, a block and a half from our hotel, found a jeweler to tighten the diamond in my ring, no charge, and looked in the shops. Auckland is a very nice town, about the size of Columbus, Ohio, with a fine harbor. There are many freighters in port with many unloading facilities. We went to a Todao show, Sound of Music, and enjoyed every minute of it. Four letters were waiting for us, one from Catherine, Vi Williams, Pink, and Gertrude. February 22, Auckland, New Zealand. 74 degrees today. We started out at 8 o'clock a.m. for a tour of the city. There are four extinct volcanoes within the city limits, many yacht basins, islands, a really interesting city. Any place you might live here would have a view of the ocean, one or the other, other, Pacific or Tasman Sea. It has drizzled here off and on today. Back to the hotel for lunch, and then off again to the Murray Museum. Very interesting. Then to the zoo to see the kiwi bird. They have five of these birds at the zoo. They cannot fly, lay eggs that weigh one pound, sleep all day, had to be awakened so that we might see them, are fast disappearing and are, as, and are cute as can be. They have no wings. Tonight we may go to the man in the flying machines. Auckland is a delightful city. February 23rd, Waitomo Caves, Waitomo Hotel. We left our hotel in Auckland at 8.15 a.m., and our trip to Waitomo Caves took us through the lovely New Zealand rolling countryside, 130 miles. It is quite a sight to see the many, many sheep on the lush hillsides. Weather is a little on the cloudy side, ideal for riding and cool. The fruits and vegetables in the roadside stands are beautiful. We bought two peaches that weigh two pounds. The Waitomo Hotel 
Where we are staying is very quaint, and the food is elegant. We have a room with three beds, and the bathtub is at least six feet long. We'll go to the caves this afternoon. The caves are not too large, but are very beautiful. We walked through had a lecture on the glowworm, which is not like our lightning bug. This worm looks like an inch and a half long stick. It is fastened to the ceilings of the caves. He puts down web-like lines ten inches long to snare food, bugs, and insects. Each worm puts out at least ten lines. When a bug gets caught, the worm pulls him up and eats him, and then puts out another line. The light comes from the byproducts of the worm's digestion. We took a large rowboat ride on the grotto where the cave was very dark, and the many glowworms on the ceiling of the cave looked like a bright Milky Way in the sky. Millions of tiny lights you could see quite distinctly. It is a beautiful and strange sight. There is no town here. The hotel is an old lovely one. The food wonderful and so much we can't eat a complete meal. February 24th. Rotorua, New Zealand, Grand Hotel. This is a thermal region, much like Yellowstone. We came here today from Waitomo through some very lovely scenery. Going by bus through the New Zealand countryside is the right way to see the many sheep and cattle farms, the different kinds of ferns, etc. The national emblem of New Zealand is the fern, and we saw all kinds at Paradise Valley, a trout a trout fishing we went through. We have never seen such trout. They send eggs ready to hatch to the states from New Zealand. As we ate our lunch, who should come to our table but Mrs. Cleo Ludwig? We visited a few minutes with them, and we'll see them again in Christchurch. We went to a Maori concert tonight, Ordinary. February 25th, Rotorua, New Zealand. At 4.15 a.m., we got up to go trout fishing with Ken Smiley. We hired a guide, went 12 miles through these gentle hills to the most lovely lake and saw the sunrise. We caught no fish. Our tour this morning is the thermal area with geysers, mud pots, and a Maori village right in the heart of it. I think Gail got, Dale got some good movies. Today is beautiful, excellent for taking pictures. This area reminds us of Yellowstone Park. We must be sitting on top of boiling mass here. Even boiling pools come right through the pavement. Of course, this is a volcanic region, and as late as 1945, the top blew off 12 miles from here. We picked up a few volcanic rocks, which we will try to polish when we get home. It looks like obsidian. All these lakes are formed by volcanoes. A fine day. February 26th. Christ Church, New Zealand. We had a nice flight out of Rotorua in a DC-3 to Wellington, the capital of New Zealand. Had a wait of half an hour, then on to Christ Church in a turboprop high-wing Faulkner. Both of these flights were fine. We could see the mountains above the clouds, one of them snow-covered. As we left the airport in Christ Church, we passed the buildings of the U.S. Project Deep Freeze, the place where our scientists start with supplies for Antarctica and explorations of the South Pole. February 27th, Mount Cook, 12,393 feet, snow covered and weather perfect. Our chartered plane flew quite close so that we might get a good view of the snow covered peaks with their residual ice. The mountains are right off our wingtip. What a fine way on a Sunday morning to see the glories of nature and worship God. We went right up into the cockpit to photograph and look. The pilot tells us so much more than on a commercial flight. We are going through Burke's Pass, which is quite close to the high mountain range. The Mackenzie Basin is beneath us. We couldn't have a more beautiful view of Mount Cook. We landed at Queenston on a grass runway, a beautiful little town right on a good-sized lake. Then on to Texanau on a lake 40 miles long with such grandeur in scenery that nothing could be more perfect. We are staying in a chalet-type lodge, wonderful room, and our lunch was excellent. The afternoon trip from 2 o'clock to 6 was, was on Lake Texanau, in and out among the fjords with such scenery as we have never seen before. 
We went to a glowworm cave, a live cave with a roaring river, several falls, three boat rides on the underground river to see the glowworms. We could see how the caves are cut out of the rock by the river. No stalactites or stalagmites in this young cave, only 25,000 years old. This river comes from a glacial lake high in the mountains, flows underground forming this cave which is tremendous. This has been a wonderful day, one of the outstanding ones of our trip. These mountains are known as the Alps of New Zealand, and tomorrow will be something too, weather permitting. February 28th, Milford Sound. The most superlative adjectives cannot describe the magic, majesty and beauty we have right out our window in the hotel at Milford Sound. The mountains rise right out of the sound. As I sit here, I count six high peaks. One peak, 9,042 feet, with an ice blue glacier of great size at the top. A falls of at least 500 feet off to the left, coming out of an underground river. Never have we seen anything like this. The whole trip in today by bus was gorgeous scenery. We now know why New Zealand is known as the Alps. The Alps in Switzerland couldn't equal this. We will be here another day and a half, and this is why we came to New Zealand. Two letters from home today telling us of David Morgan's death. March 1st. After breakfast, we boarded the, boarded the boat for the trip out Milford Sound to the Tasman Sea. The weather is perfect, sun out bright. This is the most beautiful spot we have ever been with waterfalls everywhere. The highest one 770 feet. We glided through the sound, viewing such grandeur, sheer cliffs of rock with overhanging rocks. The glacier on Pembroke Peak is glistening and ice blue, 6,710 feet high. Words can't describe what we are seeing. The swells at the opening of Milford Sound, where Tasman Sea lies ahead, were great. Australia lies 900 miles to the west. What a trip! Last night we saw two movies here at the hotel, one on Mount Cook and the glaciers, the other on the wildlife and birds of New Zealand. We walked through the, through the bush to Bowen Falls, a 526 feet drop from a hanging valley in the Darren Range, and got movies. March, March 2nd, Lake, Lake Wanaka. We started early by bus for, lace, for Lake Wanaka, an extraordinarily beautiful ride through Hollyford Valley and Homer Tunnel to Texanaw for lunch. Through Queenstown, 180 miles, arriving at Lake Wanaka at 5.30. The clouds were hanging low and we had rain, a perfect day for bus riding. The hotels in New Zealand are government-owned and are super deluxe with nine course meals. In Hollyford Valley, we saw wild foxglove with Bloom spikes at least, at least six feet high. Ferns everywhere. Falls coming from the high mountains until we lost count. I would say this must be the most beautiful place in the world. March 3rd. We had a boat ride 20 miles on Lake Wanaka. Very nice. We found a pan to pan gold. Borrowed it from a man at the filling station near the hotel. Hired a taxi. The man loaned us a small shovel, boots, an old felt hat for Dale an umbrella for me and galoshes. We were really outfitted. The taxi man, who was very friendly, took us six miles out on a mountain road to the river where the most gold was found when the gold rush was on, and we panned for gold. Also found some beautiful stones which we are sending home. We surely had fun. Found one small grain of gold, not enough, enough to mention, but gold nonetheless. We leave here tomorrow for the Hermitage in Mount Cook. March 4th, the Hermitage. Last night it, it rained 0.86 of an inch, so this morning all the mountains have their first snow face, and what beauty. We came over Lindis Pass by bus to the Hermitage at the foot of Mount Cook. This is a national park and quite an extensive hotel, also a youth hostel here. It is a very beautiful hotel in surroundings that are gigantic. We are in a hollow among the mountains with Mount Cook, 12,349 feet high, right in front of us. Dale and I have a front room, the best accommodation, accommodations in the hotel. We just returned from taking a plane up to Tasman Glacier. What a sight. 
We landed on the glacier. Dale shot pictures, and we had some of the sparkling white snow to eat. What grandeur and glistening beauty! This has been one of the finest days of our entire trip. We heard an avalanche, sounded just like prolonged thunder. There must there must be fifty glaciers close by, and as we flew, we saw dozens of falls coming down the mountainsides. New Zealand is one of the show places on this earth, and we've had two wonderful weeks here on the North and South Islands. Never shall we forget the views of Mount Cook that we had from the small plain on Sunday and from the flight to Glacier Tasman. To be continued. Well, that, that concludes today's presentation of Lenore Zook Hughes' uh, 1966 uh, Sa- Pacific, Pacific Ocean Islands vacation uh, diary. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, good luck to you in your efforts at family history, finding, preserving, and sharing old, old letters, diaries, and photographs, and interviewing elderly relatives while they're alive. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. God bless you. Take care, and I'll see you next time.